always wonder when the CEO sees their, their stock price down. As a publicly held company, investors kind of hold your feet to the fire. I don't know, how do you see it? And, and what are the conversations that you have to have with investors over it? Or do you even have to have any? Oh, you know, obviously, I spend a lot of time with investors <laughs> and uh, the conversations are very good. You know, we grew our security business in Q1 almost 30% year over year. You know, our earnings per share grew over 40% year over year. Uh, so investors have been, I would say, very happy with Akamai. Well, and what do you make of this market environment generally overall? Do you see it as a CEO? Do you just say, I write it off to the U.S.-China trade jitters? Is there concerns about a little bit of a, a, a global macro slowdown? How do you see it? Obviously, there's you know concerns about the uh, U.S.-China trade agreement, and I, I think that's had an impact on the market. You know, the uh, the good news is you know the tariffs and the things that are happening don't impact us directly. Right. Our business is you know doing you know well in China, good relationships there. Uh, but Will it, it the market. It, well, does it impact it though, Tom, at all when there's these tensions between the two countries? You know, we haven't seen that impact our business. I, I think as any global company, you worry when you you see the tensions. At the macro level. You don't want to see a trade war. We'd all like to see a fair trade agreement worked out. But right now, day to day, it's not an impact on Akamai. I want to ask you a little bit about your business, too, that we do see increasingly some of the bigger companies, you know, relying more on their own cloud tools. How does that impact you guys, or is it? You know, uh, there are some very large cloud companies that uh, do delivery themselves, and uh, so we wouldn't have that business. That said, the business that we do with the cloud giants grew in Q1 year over year, and uh, you know we carry a lot of the internet's traffic, including for the biggest cloud giants. I also want to ask you about the IPO market. It's certainly been, in addition to U.S.-China trade, I feel like everybody's been focused on the IPO market this year, finally kind of getting some momentum, but different results, if you will. You guys, I think, went public back in 99? We did, yes. Long time ago. What do you make of today's IPO debuts and some of the differences that we've seen? Lyft and Uber not doing so so well, Beyond Meat doing well, Zoom doing well? You know, it's a frothy market right now, I would say. Not as frothy as it was in 99. Uh, but, you know, and so when you have that kind of situation, it's not surprising that you see some of the share prices fall. And it's, uh, especially for companies that are losing money, if you don't maintain a, a wildly high growth rate, which you won't forever, right. then you come back down to earth pretty quick. That's a great point. I mean, I do think about when you guys went public and when you were starting up, I mean, there's so much money around now from the venture capital community, from family wealth offices, from private equity, that a company can stay private for a much longer time. Time. Um, I think about Uber, right? Private for 10 years, still not profitable. I mean, does that distort in some ways how we value companies? You know, I think there is some distortion, and it's easy to get into when companies aren't profitable because there's no notion of a price earnings ratio because there's no earnings. Right. And then you get into sometimes the revenue multiple, and that's a very dangerous place. Uh, and the market is valuing growth quite a bit, but you, you don't maintain those early stage growth rates. And in the end, profits matter. I want to ask you, too, about being here in Boston. This is where we've been all week. I'm just astounded by the amount of development, building that's continuing to go on, the intersection of medicine, biotech, venture capital, uh, technology. What is it about being based in Boston that has been you know, really a plus for you guys? Because you've been here for a long time. This is your roots. Yeah, you know, the talent here is incredible. And uh, you have the great universities. You know, we've moved half a dozen times over the last 20 years. We've always been with a block of MIT in the computer science and AI lab there, where we actually started the right. company at MIT. Uh, just the talent's extraordinary, uh, innovative, uh, you know, eager to work on really hard problems. And that's what, you know, we're doing at Akamai. So we loved starting the company here. We're very happy we stayed here and we're flourishing and growing here. You mentioned talent. As a CEO, I constantly hear, uh, Tom, from folks that that's what's difficult, finding talent nowadays. Are you guys finding those difficulties as well? We find great talent here. Uh, but is fact, it competitive? Yeah, it's competitive. But, you know, one big advantage for Akamai is we're headquartered here. And a lot of the other cloud giants that have, have woken up now and discovered, hey, there's real talent here, and they've moved offices here. Headquarters is, you know, back in California, and it makes a difference uh, when right. you're hiring. So we, we compete very successfully for talent.